Good morning, friends, and welcome to July 13th, Tuesday. Errol Durfee starts us off with Shout to the Lord. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none but you. All of my days I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I am, never cease to worship. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Tuesday's devotion is from the Upper Room Discipline, written by David Rainey. And our scripture this morning is 2 Samuel 7, 1 through 7. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See, now I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought you up the people out of Israel from, of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Now, wherever I have moved among, out about among the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, while King David is obviously at the center of today's scripture, the author finds he is drawn to the prophet Nathan. Nathan is introduced here as a kind of spiritual advisor to the king. We don't know whether he applied for this position or was appointed, but there he is with David begins to reflect on the need to build a house for the Lord. When David observes that it's a shame that the Ark of the Covenant is still in a tent, Nathan quickly supports him. Now, while it might appear that Nathan is simply being a yes man, we have no reason to think that he doesn't actually agree with David. A temple would be a wonderful way to honor God. By the next morning, of course, Nathan has changed his mind, or more accurately, God has changed it for him. It is not David's job to build a holy temple, but to trust God to build a holy people. This is an amazing and courageous shift. Just the day before, Nathan saw things one way. Now he sees them differently. And he is ready to say so even before the king. The Christian Century magazine has occasionally featured an article of series, series of articles called How My Mind Has Been Changed. In this series, various religious leaders have shared how their thinking on significant issues has shifted over time. These faithful thinkers were not being wishy-washy they were just ready to keep listening to the voice of God and changing their minds as they had new insights 
and experiences. Certainly, we are called to be unwavering in our commitment to the basic tenets of our faith, loving God and loving neighbor. But God's Spirit may change our hearts and our minds about how we live out these foundational beliefs. Let us pray. Guide us today, O God, so that we may be attentive to your spirit and have the courage to change our minds. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is God Will Take Care of You, verse 3.